I got a question from Toronto about the workings of compression drivers. So as you see, this is the compression driver and normally you see them with a horn mounted here. And now this one is the bare driver, so there is no horn attached. And as you see, it looks pretty confusing because it seems as if it's missing the diaphragm, right? So when you look at it, there is just a hole inside and you do not see any sort of moving surface. So when you compare it to a regular dome tweeter, like here, this nice little Vifa dome tweeter, ones that we would have in a bookshelf speaker, if we compare the two, you see, that's, that's the front plates. And in the case of your uh, dome tweeter, you have the magnet structure behind it. And then you would have a dome sitting around. And the entire thing has a nice face plate that would help you to mount it on the surface on the front of your speaker. So this helps to mount your structure. And this is the magnet structure that surrounds the voice coil and on top of the voice coil you have the dome and as the voice coil with the former moves up and down that makes the dome move up and down and that creates the sound that's exactly the same as a woofer you see in the woofer we have this thing that's called the dust cap and that's equivalent to this dome piece and and behind the dust cap we have the voice call former that's basically a tube with the voice call around it and on at the end of it we have this dome and on plus an extra cone on the side so here this would be if we would add an, a little bit of a nice cone here then it would be exactly like, like a woofer is. So basically your dome tweeter is, <laughs> is, is like a woofer with the dust cap only, but in even smaller size, because if we put it next to each other, look at that. So as we see that little vent hole in the middle, that's the same size as we would have for a dome in a tweeter. Now, Looking at a compression driver, it's, it works in the opposite way. So I have not taken off the diaphragm from here. So there would be no, oops, that's strong magnetic force between the two. So there wouldn't be no diaphragm sitting on top because uh, the compression driver with the horn is not like uh, a tweeter, a dome tweeter would be a horn. So so this with the horn is not the same as adding a horn to a dome tweeter. So if we would add, add the horn here, that would not turn this into a compression driver. It would be still just a tweeter with a horn on it, a dome, dome driver with a, with a horn. So here, the moving part, which would be the dome here, is actually at the bottom sitting right there and it's facing upside down. So if we would take this tweeter and turn it upside down, that would be analogous to a compression driver. So basically the dome is facing downwards and there's a protective little house that goes around it. So basically it fires to a closed enclosure that that just uh, behaves as, as a little closed box to because that's not the uh, phase of the sound so so that that's not where the sound propagates that just the opposite phase sound and there in the center imagine if if we had a hole here and and that's where the sound of the of this cone is coming out so that's what happening here we have the diaphragm here which is the same as the dry as the uh, dome tweeter here but for the dome tweeter this is a soft dome tweeter so you can you can push it and it comes back so that's how most tweeters are 
most dawn tweeters are soap dome if they are made of beryllium then you cannot push it in because it's much more rigid or titanium if you do this then you would probably damage it ah so in this case the diaphragm is made of metal so usually it's aluminum or titanium or there's also beryllium diaphragms and the old ones are phenolic diaphragms so so actually the diaphragm is firing to a compression chamber and that compression chamber leads into this cylinder in the middle and and that cylinder is that thing that separates uh, the sound coming from the compression chamber and then it finally exits right here so why did they go through all of these hoops to to uh, to do that why isn't it good enough to have a dome because dome you know it just moves back and forth so it it pushes the air in and then draws the air in push draw push draw and then we'll hear that as a sound so the problem is the following that you can push air effectively only with air so if you try to move air with with something solid then you have a problem because they do not match together so you cannot transmit energy efficiently with a solid surface to a gas and that's that's why these drivers are called low efficiency because they are not good at that so imagine this problem in a different sort of way uh, so the problem is that we are trying to affect uh, a form of matter with another form of matter so we are trying to affect a gas which is the air with, with a solid surface that's the diaphragm that's the dome dome tweeter the dome here or the diaphragm there so what happens is that when they try to meet each other they they cannot couple the energy effectively because their states their rigidity is drastically different so imagine this is the same scenario as if you have a pool of water and let's say it's it's like a, this big this deep pool and you try to uh, force a wave into the water by trying to punch the water in and what happens when you have a, a swimming pool and then you punch into it then you will just create ripples on the surface of the water but the force is not going down deep to the bottom of the pool it's going to just stay on the surface and that's the same thing with with the tweeters and also with the woofers is that when they try to transmit the energy to the air it's not going to come out in this direction but it's going to just ripple away and and not the energy will not get transmitted efficiently to the air and so that's why they uh, invented compression drivers so what compression drivers do is that the diaphragm it it moves the air and that air first couples to this air column that's within this piston within this chamber here so first there's like a huge surface of moving mass and that uh, moves some air which is not efficient but because that air is in a closed space the air has no choice but to compress and then release compress and release so at, at 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 the at the top of this chamber where this chamber narrows down into the shaft's diameter there it all that it can do is just to go up there and then you have this pressure wave that's meeting the air here so basically there's like an inefficient uh, transfer mechanism and we are forcing it to move a column of air and then when we get to the surface to meet with the air in the room there's already air coupling to air and that's what makes these drivers so very efficient and this is the same analog as sticking with the swimming pool analog that we are not trying to punch the water but we have a hose 
and we put the hose into the surface of the water and we open the tap so then that jet of water will be able to go down to the bottom of the swimming pool so then the energy if if we just squeeze the the end of the hose uh, for use that energy that we would just use to punch down the water if we use that energy to squeeze then with squeezing the water in we can make the water go down so that's what we are doing with a compression driver that we are compressing the air so that it's the air coupling to the air of the room and then we increase the efficiency about 100 to 1000 fold compared to trying to couple it directly to the air so it means that like 1000 times uh, more energy can be transmitted to the air compared to this scenario so now let me just show you how how does this work so this thing has uh, okay so there you go so this is the scenario of our typical uh, tweeter dome tweeter so you have the magnet structure and uh, actually this is not a dome tweeter anymore but a regular driver dome tweeter would be just this part without that basket on the side so it just moves back and forth back and forth and it's pushing the air so when we go for a compression driver this is the cross section of a compression driver so you saw that's the hole that we looked into it and under that that's the compression chamber and the diaphragm sits underneath so it moves up and down up and down and it it compresses the air here and that compressed air is moving up and down this column and then it exits into your room uh, so let's just see how this works this works like that so you have the diaphragm moving back and forth and there's the column nowhere and if we add the horn to it then we can add direction for that air movement and when you have a, a theater like a movie theater then these horns are absolutely mandatory to to funnel the air movement and give it a direction so that people who are sitting like uh, 10 meters 15 meters like 40 feet away from the screen they still will be able to hear the sound otherwise if we do not put this in front the sound would disperse and uh, it's okay for a living room but not for a big movie theater and that's why they invented horns to uh, propagate the sound to greater distances and if you just have a compression driver you do not put a horn in front you still have amazingly high efficiency just you are not able to propagate that uh, those sound waves to a great distance so i hope this uh, just helps to illuminate the difference between how compression drivers work and how dome treaters work. Thank you. Bye-bye.